Hey, what's going on guys? Come back again. Z here. Remember our first computer was ZX Spectrum and like many other computers of that time, it was running basic uh, It was in the ROM and in order to store whatever program you've typed in during the session, you needed to dump it into the cassette tape. But since I didn't have a cassette recorder, uh, it wasn't an option for me. So if I wanted to play a game, uh, I needed to open the book with uh, like I had a book like 48 programs in basic and some program some book about the games in basic some simple games so I wanted to play a game I needed to take that book type in the code and then run it play for five minutes and then after I've turned off my computer and if I turn it turn it on again turn it on again uh, my program was lost because I had no chance to save it and that's one of the reasons why I call myself Code Monkey King, by the way, because all this typing uh, basic programs from screen without much understanding what exactly they do. Like, I didn't understand that back in the day. But anyway, um, and since then, uh, I, had, <clears throat> I had a sort of a child, child dream to be able one day to store something that I write in basic. And who knew that after more than 25 years, I would uh, start writing this uh, Kim one emulator, Arduino-based one, and who could, who could have ever imagined that I, I would have make Tiny Basic by Tom Pittman actually running on this emulator. But what is even more interesting and what is exactly the topic of this video, of this today's video, is that finally I've implemented a feature of actually storing whatever you've written in basic uh, and loading this back from the EEPROM. So uh, Arduino has EEPROM and using the EEPROM library we can uh, write and read the data from there back and forth and even if I power off my Arduino then, then uh, I can plug it in again and just load the data from the memory to, uh, to my uh, basic uh, interpreter and uh, I make a fancy uh, a fancy hookup like a fancy reference so I can do it directly from basic and then I can just keep working on the same on exactly the same program I've been working previously so the plan is the following um, I will now show you how this works uh, in regards to basic but actually the back end for this is written in 6502 assembly and it's it relies on the so-called move it program from the first book of Kim and also I've written uh, a couple of driver, uh, drivers, a couple of driver functions in 6502 machine codes. I didn't even use assembly because uh, the code there is really self-explanatory and we'll walk through, the, through that code as well. In order to make some sort of a short co shortcuts for this kind of uh, feature of like dumping the RAM into the EEPROM back and forth. Okay, but first, I just want to give you an idea that currently uh, EEPROM is free, it's, it's empty. So if I go to uh, 2900 hexadecimal like this, then here you see like it's all zeros. So we, I don't have anything in EEPROM currently, completely nothing there. So uh, once we save our basic program, it would, it would actually go to this memory location. So uh, now let's go to 2000 hexadecimal and this is exactly the location of, of the tiny basic by Tom Pittman here and shift G to run it so we're starting by running this from so-called cold cold start uh, which uh, just initializes all the internal variables that are needed for basic to work and then uh, when we load or save data we can enter from the warm start and that's another option okay so we are we are currently in basic so let's type in a couple of epic lines of code so print hello and 20 print and world uh sorry just it doesn't it doesn't load to edit the line but it's okay so print world <laughs> okay take number three uh print world like this. Okay, so now if I list the program, I have this exact two lines, but yeah, I actually also need to add the end. Add, uh, add, add end at the end. So list. Okay, now let's try to run this. Okay, work. So let's imagine that it's not just the three lines of code, but a bit bigger, pr uh, bigger program. And we want to store it and power off the Arduino. And next time, we want to, next time we'll. Uh, 
power up our origin. I want to load this, upload this from the EEPROM. So uh, here I have uh, two options of how we can store it. So the first option is to use the predefined uh, variables S and L as the these are these are storing the addresses of the decimal representation of the addresses to run the user subroutine to store and to load uh, the uh, RAM to the EEPROM. So literally all it does is just snap makes a snapshot of the RAM from uh, 200 hexadecimal to 03FF hexadecimal and dumps it to the EEPROM storing at uh, 2900 and also it dumps uh, the first two bytes it dumps the length of the basic program so because otherwise it just prints only the first line no, 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 nothing about the length so it's, that's important as well so if you have used s or l variables already then uh, you can just use direct addresses so this is optional but if you didn't use these variables yet then just to give you an idea so if i say like print s and here we have the decimal representation of the address to call in order to run the routine to store the RAM to the EEPROM. And same for load. This is it. So another address here. Um, yeah. Uh, so now let's go. Let's now let's do the following thing. So I say a equals. So this is just to please the syntax of Tiny Basic. And then user. And I want to save. Hence s and hit enter. And now you see, like we just drop back to the key monitor, and that happens because uh, we just uh, we just ran the uh, user subroutine, and uh, wherever the program counter dropped, so actually dropped at forty sixty. Uh, so yeah, um, we're now back to the monitor, so we can go back to to basic. But before that, I just want to show you that at currently at the address twenty nine hundred, we have following data so the first two bytes is the program length and then we have the ascii encoded uh basic source code here and here it ends it's quite a small program but anyway so now uh we can do the following thing so um i just power off my arduino and uh it just this this has window has disappeared because i've plugged this out here is my tiny little Arduino Nano, all right? And now I put it back. Okay, so now I just put it back. Okay, and here, let me just quickly start. Let me quickly start it back, all right? So, uh, if I go to 2900s, you see like the bytes are still there. Why? Because this is EEPROM, right? So, uh, what I can do next, well, uh, if this was the previous session, I could have used the warm start uh, for, uh, for basic and start with uh, 2003. But since I've re uh, I reboot the system, I need to reinitialize basic from scratch. So, just to give you an idea. So, for instance, I go to back to 2000s and here. And if I list the program, there is nothing, right? But if I say A equals to, and then the user function, and I want to load the program it does the same thing it just loads the program drops back to the key monitor and now it's important that i need to use the warm start here so like this uh because i don't want to touch the variables anymore and go in there and shift g to run and now list and here we go we got our basic program being available so we can keep going with editing this program do whatever we want we can store it back and be happy with that and obviously we still can run the program and have exactly the same result and i don't guess well probably for you this doesn't mean much and you can't even understand why i'm so happy about this but uh you know like all these modern technologies that we currently have like uh, in the modern era 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 like um with this laptops power powerful cpus gpus and so on this this means literally nothing to me compared to this sort of a tiny little thing because uh i don't know uh I really feel like after fulfilling this child's dream, uh, I really feel happy now. Okay, so uh, now you see that like I've just I, I've just proved the concept, so that it, that it sort of works. And but this was this wasn't really the most interesting and the most exciting part of the video. And uh, what I want to do now, uh, I actually want to dive into the source code and give you an idea of how this works. 
because the way how it works is is really interesting and you remember like if you've been watching the previous video when I've been testing this tiny basic uh, initially I've been mentioning that this tiny basic might have been considered as some sort of a um, scripting language like sort of an operating system scripting language and the, this k1 emulator doesn't have an operating system and how you how you, modern user used to that word what that means uh, but anyway uh, this sort of a use of the user function here using the predefined constants actually really looks like a sort of a scripting language so it's really a Linux Linux style approach uh, when you're kind of building something that your operating system can do uh, being uh, within, the uh, within the interpreted language. Well, uh, obviously for shell script, you can just create a file and run that using the shell interpreter. But uh, here we do everything on the fly. And well, actually we can even, uh, well, this, this tiny basic is power powerful enough that we can actually not uh, run in this on the fly, but even make, make a program that uh, amount of anything else would be loading and storing the data uh, while executing. and that's that might uh, open some new fantastic opportunities as well but anyway uh, let's drop back to the source code and see how it works so yeah yeah uh, here is just here is just read me uh, in here so I will go to um, yeah here uh, 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 these are two little drivers uh, I've written directly in the 6502 machine codes uh, with the hand assembling um, but that's not what I wanted to show you first yeah so uh this is the core that allows this sort of a functionality so this is the legend remove it program from the first book of kim and it's available uh um yeah let me just quickly show you this because this is worth of showing really so we go to kim one software uh, uh hands on website and in the first book of Kim. Oh, I don't even need to go there. I can actually, I'm sorry. Uh, I can actually do this a little bit differently. I have this on my GitHub. It's just gonna be faster, really. So here in software. No, actually, no, not exactly. Actually, this is here. So yeah first book of Kim and let's search for move it and here we go so here is this legend remove it I've mentioned so uh, what it does this one moves anything anywhere no limits to number of bytes no locations in uh, or locations in memory or overlapping of source and destination and yeah so uses to leave the sections of the of the code from other programs or do whatever actually do whatever you want so what is what is what this program does it grabs uh whatever memory range you specify and then it uh copies the data to another memory range you specify now what is uh interesting here is uh is the usage so use uh use it straightforward uh old start address goes in d0 d1 old end address goes to d2 d3 so this means that uh d0 d1 in the little endian byte order which is uh, which is significant because otherwise it's not going to be working uh contains uh the starting address so we're uh, so starting from this memory location and then going to whatever another memory location so uh within that range so we store that range then uh we start we uh, in the d4 d5 so all these are zero page addresses so in the d4 d5 we do store the address for uh, the destination address and we don't need to s to set up the destination and address only the destination store address which is cool because it just calculates the length of the, of the program itself so without any without any issues and then we just need to go to where the program origin is and run it so i've changed the program origin so it's no longer at 1780 and what is cool about this program that you can put it wherever wherever you want or you see like at this location or wherever you want to have it in your system and uh, this program even can move itself in the memory which is absolutely fascinating but anyway it's not the topic here so uh I've put this uh, move it program at the origin of four Saldans. And if you want to uh, use this for your custom needs, for your custom purposes, you can actually go to the Kim monitor. You can go to the Kim monitor. Uh, so let me just uh, get 
risk escape from the from the basic interpreter. So if you go to 00 d zero, uh, so here uh, these are predefined values that that uh, that were provided by the driver program that I've just ran to load. But uh, if you just uh, specify your own values and then run the move it program at the origin and it also starts at 4,000 4, hexadecimal, then you can use it however you want and you can either move the chunks of data within the RAM or from RAM to 6530 write chips or from RAM to EEPROM back and forth or within the EEPROM back and forth. And by the way, uh, an interesting thing that I've discovered that um, even though the EEPROM in uh, Arduino Nano is only 1K of memory, but this EEPROM library, I believe this writes to the flash memory as well because I'm able to store literally more than 1K of memory. So I try to store four but uh, it, it can do even more. So I believe that the EEPROM, at least the version that I've used, uh, the, that I've used here, is actually capable of writing to the flash memory where the program, or like the code for your program is stored, which is really fantastic. But anyway, um, so this is the core driver that, that we're about to be using here. And now, uh, if we didn't have uh, this uh, user programs to, actually automatically fill these values for us, then we would need to do this any uh, every time by hands. And this might not be very convenient because literally all you want to do is you want just to grab the memory from uh, 0200 hexadecimal to 03FF, 512 bytes and put them into the EEPROM. That's pretty much all about it. And that's the reason why I decided to hard code the values uh, that we're about to be using uh, just directly into the program. Hence the idea to provide this tiny little driver programs down below. So um, I have two of those, save and load. So first goes save, then goes load. And if we drop back to the memory map, again, here we have, so we have the move it uh, from 4000 to 45 f hexadecimal. Then we have from 4060 to 48 a we have the save utility and then we have the load utility. Every, uh, each of them takes only uh, 43 bytes. Probably we could have decreased that, but anyway, it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not major here. So um, let's walk through this uh, 642 machine codes to get an idea of what it does, because this is extremely simple thing. All right, so, uh, and I can even, Probably I can even show you this uh, because uh, we can we can actually yeah I can no no I can't show you the because, yeah I can sorry I can't show you this because it would jump to the uh, move it some routine already so it would actually be uh, uh, like uh, bring the data from one place to another and after the pro, after move it works uh, works it overrides uh, this value so yeah that's let's just be happy with. Uh, walking through through these codes. So um, let's drop these four lines for now. Uh, we'll we'll come back to them later on. And starting from here, so save, and this is what I do. So I'm loading the value of zero to a register and and saving this at the D zero. So the least significant byte goes first. Then uh, I load the most significant byte of the starting address to a register and store it to D one. So eventually we have the values of 00 in D0, 02 in D1. Then I, then, then I need to specify the end address. So I'm loading FF, which is the least significant byte of the end address to D2, and then the most significant byte of the end address to D3, all right? Uh, and then I need to specify the address uh, or the starting address of the new starting address where to write the data. So 00, 00 is the least significant byte, then store into Z4, and then the most significant the most significant byte is 29, uh, which result in 2900 hexadecimal exactly where. Uh, hold on a sec. Okay. Okay, guys, I'm sorry, uh, I forgot to, to fix the commentaries, yeah, because uh, I remember that it, <laughs> uh, it's not 0002, 
because the first two bytes are reserved for, for the program length of the basic program. Yeah, sorry, just uh, I saw this, uh, I spotted this error in the commentaries and thought like, what the heck is going on? Okay, so now it's fixed. I need to upload this uh, to get up to make sure the latest version is available. But anyway, so um, uh, the least significant byte of the uh, new address where to write the data is 02. So skip the first byte, the first two bytes. And then the most significant byte is 29, so it's D5. And then, uh, so here we just provided um, a parameters uh, to initialize uh, the parameters that the MoveIt uh, utility is going to be relying on. So this might be treated as a, some sort of the parameters that you are sending to the function if we're thinking in the terms of the high-level languages. So at some point, this might be treated like that. And what the load program does, it does exactly the same, but uh, in the opposite way. So it's just a matter of re of initializing the addresses in in a different in a different manner. So now uh, and again this error is <laughs> okay. So uh, starting from from the like the source location of where to start of where to start looking for the data to be copied is uh, twenty nine zero two. So this is the starting address. We're skipping the first uh, the first two bytes for now because that's just the, the, the length of the basic program. And then up to 2AFF. Uh, in the year, I'm wondering probably... Yeah, so th this contains uh, this contains a small little bug as well because it just drops the two... Yes, it contains... So yeah, just... Uh, sorry guys, just because uh, otherwise I'll just forget forget this. So yeah, ju just to make sure that um, it restores the data properly. For otherwise, uh, it just doesn't restore the two last bytes of the RAM. Three, uh, zero three FE and zero three FF will not be stored. So here I need to add two more bytes. So not well. Uh, I'm sorry. Just it, it takes another half an hour at, at, at very least. Uh, but it's not essential, so uh, for it's it's okay to to make sure that the program that actually works. All right. Um, then what? Then we specify. Uh, then we specify uh, to a why to a. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Okay. Th this is oh, yeah. This is right because two a two a f f or it would be uh, it should be two b zero one or zero two. Not sure. And this was the end address of where to look for for data. And the new address where to copy the data is gonna be zero two zero zero, which is uh, two hundred hexadecimal. The, the common. Uh, entry point for the program for unexpanded Kim to start uh, the, the starting address. And also, this is exactly the address where the basic program is going to be stored or loaded, or if you just uh, fire the basic interpreter, it would start and you just start adding lines one by one. It would be storing them start, starting from uh, 200 hexadecimal because that's exactly the way how I have, how I have recompiled that to to actually start from that memory location, just to occupy the most uh, uh, the most memory uh, that is available on an on an an unexpanded game. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, you know, one last thing is these four kind of lines. Uh, so here is another. Well, for me personally, this is really interesting sort of a thing. So uh, before I added this little hack, uh, I had the following behavior. So I could have seen the program. And that, that worked like a charm. And then I could have loaded load the program. That worked like a charm as well. And if I ran the program, it also did execute the entire program. However, the problem was that when I, uh, may, uh, when I was firing the list command, it only showed me the very first line of code and didn't show any other lines of code. And I was wondering, like, why the heck is that actually happening? And then I realized why. And that's because uh, when your basic interpreter just initializes, it has a variable uh, called program end. So at the addresses of 24 and 25, zero page, uh, it has the address in the little bit, little ending by order, uh, or actually, not sure, 
whether well the the, the ending end is doesn't matter here because I just grab those values uh, whatever they were initialized by the basic and I don't care how they work internally so yeah uh, but anyway these two bytes store the end and address of the basic program and if it just not being set up properly then we will most likely see just a single line of, of code no matter how many lines of code you have and the problem is that mm, you just can't edit the code any longer because you can't inspect the code that's the problem but uh in case when you store in your basic program by the time you're storing the, your, your basic program at that exact moment uh at the address is to 24 and 25 you have the exact values uh, that if you restore those values when you're loading the program back in that case the list command would be working properly would see the entire program and you can continue developing just like nothing happened like you didn't power off your computer at all so uh, the solution was pretty simple and straightforward so what I've added to my uh, tiny little drivers to initialize those addresses for the move it utility I've also added at the beginning of, of those two drivers I've added some code first to directly store the values at 24 and 25 zero page to 2900 and 2901 of the EEPROM back and forth and here is the code that does this so here is the code um, so first save so uh, I'm loading uh, so this is the upcode uh, to load uh, the data from the zero page so load it to A register. So to A register, we're loading the value at 24 hexadecimal. Uh, and then we store it to uh, 2900s. And so this is yeah, like, uh, the little Indian byte order for, for the address. So storing at 2900s. And then we're loading the value, whatever we have at 2500 page. And we're storing this to, 21, to 2901. And we're done. And now, uh, probably one last thing that I want to demonstrate. So if I go to 0024, we have 2B and we have 02. And if I now go to 2900, we have exactly the same value. So this is the 2B and this is, this is the 02. So this 2B goes from here. It goes here. And this goes from here and it goes here. And this, this this happens when when you load a program. When you store the program, it happens the opposite way. So first it goes from here to here, and from and from here to here, and then whatever we have uh, the next byte. So starting from here from twenty nine zero two. So zero a uh, zero zero fifty fifty two and so on. So we go to zero two zero zero. Then you have exactly the same addresses. So zero a 0A, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 50, 50, 52, 52, 49, 49, 4E, 4E, and so on. Uh, yeah, just dropped here. It's already the next one. So yeah, um, this is how it works. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this is it from my side. Thanks for watching. Until the next time, and take care.